What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and it is time for the yearly banger video that comes out right around this time in the Madden ratings. And that's going to be looking at the worst ratings that came from the launch here of the Madden 21 player ratings. I was only going to do 10, a top 10. And then I opened it up on social media, I posted it on Twitter and I got over you know hundreds of responses and I, I was like, you know what? These guys are very passionate. They're pa I'm going to bump it up to 20. Now, this list, I kind of have it starting with DBs, and we'll go all the way up to the quarterbacks. It's not ranked. You know, they're not in order of, like, the worst rating to the best worst rating. I, I just feel like, you know, we'll just we'll just go by position, work our way through, talk about the big-time omissions, talk about what was going on with you, and the robberies, it's everything, everything in between. It's bad ratings. It's bad ratings day. So we got a lot of players to get through, so we're not going to dilly-daddle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the rating, the stats, and what I would have given them. I feel like that's the easiest way. So first, we're going to start in the AFC. And that's going to be Tredavious White, who only got a 90 overall. It's better than the Leaks. The Leaks had him at an 89. I think a 90 just looks better, plays, it feels better that he broke that 90 threshold. But given the fact that in 2019, he had 58 tackles, 4 TFLs, 17 pass breakups, and 7 interceptions, I would have given him a 92. I think, you know, Stephon Gilmore is, you know, probably the best corner in the AFC, we'll say that for sure. And I think when you look at the discussion, who's the second best corner in the AFC? It's probably within that same division, and it's Tredavious White. He's definitely in that conversation, if not clearly the number two corner in the AFC. So I, I think a 92 probably would have been a favorable rating here for Trey White and a reasonable rating for Tredavious White. I get a lot of hit-ups on social media that even with the 90, Bills fans were not happy with Trey White's rating. And I, I agree. I think a 92 would have been more appropriate. Uh, going to number two on the list, it's Casey Hayward Jr. of the Chargers, who got an 89 overall. I think given what he did in 2019, down year for him. Uh, 32 tackles, 8 pass breakups, 2 interceptions. I mean, he's been sensational for the Chargers ever since he left the Green Bay Packers. But I, I just thought he was average last season, was not elite, was not even really fringely. I, I think an 86 might have been a good starting point here for Casey Hayward versus an 89. I think if you gave him an 86, I wasn't going to get a single people, a single tweet uh, not a single developer would have got hit up being like, you guys robbed Casey Hayward. He needs to be higher than an 86. I feel like 86 would have been a great starting point for Mr. Casey Hayward of the LA Chargers. Uh, staying within the division, going to number three, it is going to be LaMarcus Joyner of the Vegas Raiders, who got an 82 overall in 2019. He had 49 tackles, three TFLs, three pass breakups, and a 46 PFF score. I'm not going to use a PFF score for everything, but for players that... Yeah, they you know they might have had a better run grade than would show up on the box score. Uh, if they if, you know if they had an off year and the PFF was also very critical of their play, we're gonna we're gonna you know we'll reference it. And I think Joiner was very very much a miscast. They tried playing him at slot corner when in reality he was he excelled at a free safety with the Rams and they just kind of misused him a little bit. So I think 82 is really really high for him. I would have given him a 75. He was not particularly good. And I think generally speaking, for how much money Vegas paid for him to come over in free agency, he was kind of a bust. So I think an 82 is just too rich for a guy that was a miscast. Start him at 75, and then if they move him to free safety, play him in his best position, then you can gradually increase his rating to where it could be and where he really showed he could play like when he was with the Rams. Going to number four, we're going to New England, and it's going to be Patrick Chung, who got an 83 overall. What? In 2019, in 13 games, because he had something where, like, didn't, like, his home security system go off, and then the cops came to check, make sure it was good, and they found, like, drugs, cocaine, or something crazy like that. But either way, uh, in, th in 13 games last year, Patrick Trump had 51 tackles, three pass breakups, a 55 PFF score. Yet he still got an 83. Very high. I mean, I do have a, a grudge against Patrick Trump because when he was in Philadelphia, he was horrifically bad. And then he went back to New England and was playing at least better. But I think 83, way, way, way too high here for Patrick Chung. I would have given him something like a, like a 76, 75, 76, somewhere in that territory. And uh, yeah, that is just, oof. You know, if you're, if you know, play Kyle, give, you know, if, if Patrick Chung was more appropriate, you'd be, if you're New England, you're doing a New England franchise, you'd be very much, very easy decision to go with Kyle Duggar as your long-term play uh, and not Patrick Chung. 83, pretty overrated. Let's just say one guy that works on the rating is a, is, you know, is a Cowboys fan, he's also a Patriots fan. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, moving on to number five on my list. And this is the one I got hit up the most for the defensive back position. And that is Minka Fitzpatrick. Of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he got an 87 overall. In 2019, he had 57 tackles, 5 interceptions, 9 pass breakups. And you could argue the hottest, the best DB to close out the season. 
uh, since he got acquired. He was he was insane. Was able to put him either make a great play interception or find himself in the right place at the right time. And a lot of people are upset. 87 is not brutal. It's definitely not brutal. I think, you know, you could go as high as an 89, especially when you look at the other safeties at the position. You know, Micah Hyde's higher than him. And I'm not saying Micah Hyde's a bad player. I would just argue Minka Fitzpatrick should be higher. So I would say 89 for Minka. Definitely, if you're a Steeler fan, you could feel a little bit hard done by with an 87. But it's not brutal. It's not a brutal score. Uh, going to number six. We're finishing up. I think this is our final DB. And he's got left the Kansas City Chiefs after winning a Super Bowl to go back with the Washington football team. And that is Kendall Fuller. Kendall Fuller had got an 86. And in the 2019 season, he had 11 games. I know he got benched for some of the games for the Kansas City Chiefs. But in those 11 games, he put up 49 tackles, 3 TFLs, 2 pass breakups, and had a 61 PFF score. Now, I get he's a corner. And when you flip a corner to free safety, the rating might be up a couple points. But still, 86 is way too high. Fuller should be 79 at the most. 78, 79, somewhere in that territory. Because he was not good at all. For the Kansas City Chiefs. He was a guy obviously got traded in that Alex Smith trade. He was a really, really good uh, nickel corner for the Redskins. And hey, maybe now back in Washington, you know, it's a different organization, different coaches and stuff. Maybe they can put him in the best position to make plays. Very similar, maybe like Lamarcus Joyner. But I think 86 for Fuller, who got benched. <laughs> Straight up got benched. I think they're using uh, Honey Badger and Juan Thornhill. And Fuller was just like, oh, I'm just here chilling. Can't wait to hit free agency and go somewhere else. So 86 for Fuller. A little too high for my blood. A little too... It's just... It's not great. And actually, here is the final DB. At number seven, it is Derwin James. Now, I like Derwin James. I think he's a very exciting player. I think he's also very annoying with all the fumbles that he was causing in Madden 20. But when you look at Derwin James in 2019, only played in five games, 34 tackles, three TFLs, one pass breakup. Had an injury, come back from injury. How much do you want to penalize a guy for an injury? But I think 89... You know, we just talked about... Uh... You know, Mika Fitzpatrick getting an 87. And Mika Fitzpatrick was outstanding last year. Derwin James coming back from an injury. I, I kind of think he's a little overrated from Matt. I know when you're grading him out from an athletic standpoint, he's always going to get a good rating because he's an elite athlete. And I think absolutely give him like a week or two because obviously the ratings get updated uh, every other every some weeks. Just, you know, start him a little bit lower. I would have given Derwin James an 85. An 85 at launch and then work his way back up as he's healthy. As he's fully healthy and starting all the games and becoming a beast. For the charge, I think 89 for a starting point for Derwin James. A little high. A little high. And I think he's a little bit overrated for the Madden Dev team. I think 85 and then work his way up for Derwin James would have been a good starting point. But that's going to finish it up with the DBs. Now we're moving on to the linebackers. This is a guy, fan of the channel, big time fan of the channel. And that is the maniac, Darius Leonard of the Colts, who in 2019, got that 85 overall. In 2019, in 13 games, 121 tackles, 7 TFLs, 5 sacks, Five picks, seven pass breakups. I know the PFF score might say his coverage is not that good. He might be just Johnny on the spot, right place, right time. But this is a guy that's like diddling with the all-pro team his first two years. 85? 85, dude? I would have given him a 90. Absolutely would have given him a 90. This guy here is production personified. It feels like every game he's making a play, he's causing a turnover, making a, you know, helping that Colts defense that was, you know, trying to bail out Jacoby and that offense for a majority of the season. I think... Darius Leonard, absolutely. He was robbed of this rating last year to kick off Madden 20. I think he's, you know, he's very, very hard done by here with only an 85. I would have personally given Darius Leonard a 90. So definitely, Colt fans, you got a reason. You got a reason to be upset. You got a reason to be heated about this one. Going to number nine, going back to the Steelers. Steelers fans are so upset with all the ratings. We have TJ Watt, who got an 86 overall. And in 2019, 55 tackles, 14 TFLs. 14 and a half sacks, eight forced fumbles, and two interceptions. He was, he, I mean, you know, all pros, everything to boot, 86. Now, I think this could be a little bit of the outside linebacker position generally being tough for ratings just because what classifies an edge rusher, what classifies a linebacker. So I think anytime you see outside linebacker ratings, it's just uh, Madden needs to move on. They need to straight up have linebackers, edge rushers, so you can properly rate these guys. But 86 for TJ Watt is low. I would have given him a 91. I feel like that would be a, start, a really, really fair, solid starting spot based on, upon the production he had last year. I think it was a breakout year, even if you're going into the nerd analytics, PFF. He, he graded out fairly well for that. So I think maybe even more so than Minka, if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, I think that 86 for TJ Watt is a little rough. I think I would have given him a 91 to start out the Madden 21 season. So we're going out to number 10 now, rounding out the top 10. It's another linebacker that I think 
kind of like what is a victim of the outside linebacker edge rush deal, and that is Shaq Barrett. Shaq Barrett of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got an 85 overall. However, in 2019, 58 tackles, 19 TFLs, 19 and a half sacks, six forced fumbles. I get it. He could be a one-year wonder. Could be a flash in the pan. But that's like one of the best things about Mattis. But I can still remember one-hit wonders from games when I'm going up. Guys that might not, maybe had a huge year, got a huge ass rating when Madden dropped, and then maybe their production and stuff dipped because it was just a boom year, right? Fair. But then make this the one Madden that Shaq Barrett is insane because he had an unreal 2019 season. 19 TFLs, 19 FX, six forced fumbles. I would have given him a 90 right on the dot. And I'm surprised they wouldn't be even generous with this rating because everyone's going to be trying to play Tampa, the casuals anyway, because Tom Brady and Gronk are back there. So why not go all over the place and make them really overpowered and give Shaq Barrett a generous rating and kind of look past the potential that he's going to be a one-year wonder. So I think Shaq Barrett, pretty harsh rating here for the Tampa Buccaneers given the production that he had in 2019. Uh, going to number 11, it is our lone uh, defensive tackle on the list. And that is Michael Pierce of the Minnesota Vikings. Michael Pierce got a 91 overall. However, in 2019, 35 tackles, two TFLs, no sacks. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, he's a run stuffer. He's a guy that affects the run. Clearly, he'd have a high PFF score, right? Because, you know, think about Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham, PFF darling, because he might not always get a crazy number of sacks, but he's great against the run. However, Michael Pierce had a 69 PFF score. You know, he's not bad. It's a great replacement for the Minnesota Vikings to come in and take over for Linval Joseph. Don't get me wrong. It's a big loss for the Baltimore Ravens. But 91? No. I would have given him something like an 84. I, I think 84 is the, the area code Michael Pierce should be close to. Not a 91, given how lackadaisical his 2019 season was. 91? Oh, that just sounds really weird. Uh, but on the good news, if you're triggered, Viking fans, I'm going to I'm gonna hit another guy up on that D-line. And that is Daniil Hunter, who got an 89 overall. And I think for Daniil Hunter, should have been higher. I, I would have given him something way higher. 70, well, not way higher, because 89. It's not, you know, it's not a brutal score. But in 2019, 70 tackles, 15 TFLs, 14 and a half sacks, and three forced fumbles. 92. I, I think anytime I watch Minnesota play, he's the one guy on the defense, even more so than Harrison Smith. And when even when a couple years ago, when Xavier, go, go back two years, when Xavier Rhodes was a premier corner. I still think Daniel Hunter was the most dangerous player on that defense. I remember when he was coming up, Everson Griffin was the established veteran, and Daniel Hunter was this insanely jacked kind of project guy at LSU. And I was like, man, that guy's going to be scary. And I was talking about how young. 89 is a little low. I, I think 92 for Daniel Hunter. I mean, at worst, swap his rating with Michael Pierce. Give him the, give him the 91, not Michael Pierce. How are you going to give Michael Pierce a better rating than Daniel Hunter? Don't think so. Not a good score. Going to number 13 on our list as I'm looking through what we got here. We're going to the offense. And we're going to start at the tight end position. And we're going to start with Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram got an 88 overall. However, in 2019, he only played, featured in eight games where he had 44 catches, 467 yards, three touchdowns. This guy is, is becoming, I think he gets the, the record, uh, the award. The award, sorry. That's probably the best way to put it. Feels like every year, these constantly hurt tight ends get Great ratings. Last year, Tyler Eifert, um, Jordan Reed. Those guys always got really high scores. And I get Evan Ingram, A tier, S tier even, athlete, the tight end position. Should have a good rate. 88 for a guy that has been, you know, inconsistent. His availability has been very questionable. I think Evan Ingram should start at like 83. Another one of these guys, kind of like, um, kind of like Derwin James. Start him a little lower. And then if he can, you know, rattle off five, six weeks to kick off the 2020 season and is playing like his ceiling at his ceiling, then sure, move him up. But starting a guy that only featured in eight games, has been banged up, has shown his inability to stay healthy, 88 over some of the tight ends that were productive last year. I think he's a higher rating than Darren Waller. Darren Waller had 1,000 yards last season on a garbage Raiders team. So I, I think Evan Ingram, start him at an 83. 83 is not a bad score, and you're not, you don't have to nuke all of his athletic ability. But I think, I think 83 is a lot more appropriate for Evan Ingram then in 88, go number 14. This might be the biggest one, the most popular rating that people are talking about uh, for the for the launch is, uh, well, let's see if we can spell it right. Is Rob Gronkowski getting a 95? I actually don't despise this rating, but I totally get it's kind of ridiculous. He was, he was retired. He was retired, and then he walks back in to be the third best tight end at launch anyways. And the fourth one is the Philadelphia Eagle in Zach Ertz, and the only guys ahead of him are Kelsey and George Kittle. But in a way... 
I mean, you know, as much as I like Zach Ertz, if Gronk is even kind of close to where he was two years ago, he's probably, he's, you know, he should be probably higher than Zach Ertz. But again, the conversation could be, give Gronk the 88 or something like that. And then if he looks like Gronk, if he's the Gronk that we remember from New England, then you slowly bump his rating back up to a 95 or something like that. 95 just to start, I can get why this was kind of blowing up all over social media about just, you know, being way, way too high. And I think there's some validity to it. Going to number 15, we're going to the wide receiver position. And we're going to take a look at Brandon Cooks, a man who inadvertently now is going to be the guy look to replace the production that they lost in DeAndre Hopkins. But Brandon Cooks got an 85 in 2019 in 14 games, 42 catches, 580 yards, and two touchdowns. Again, I think some of this rating is, is influenced by his sheer athletic ability, which is off the charts. But given his production, given the fact that he played on, you know, should have been a pass-happy offense with Cooper Cup, and with Robert Woods, you know, he just, you know, it was an off year for Brandon Cooks. I think 85 is is where, like, a prime Brandon Cooks should be. Not a guy coming off an off year where, you know, it wasn't really that bang. 14 games. So I think 81, somewhere in that territory, would have been a great starting point for him. 85, a little too rich for my blood. Going to number 16. Oh, boy. This is going to be good. I'm sure this is going to be well because I've already talked about it. And first, we're going to start with Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, guy, we have a lot of love for on the channel because we did the Raiders as our minus 20 franchise, and we dominated with Josh Jacobs. Even though we got hurt a lot in our Raiders franchise, he was awesome. He was really one of the stars, especially on the offensive side. But in 88, is ridiculous. In 88, I mean, I get it. He's a beast. He's a, I really like watching him play. I drafted him in all my fantasy leagues. I am not an anti-Josh Jacobs. He should have gotten 85. 85, I think, is where he finished. At Madden 20, I think 85 is a great starting point, especially when you look at some of the other running backs. That we'll get to. But you look at Josh Jacobs, he had 1,300 yards from scrimmage, seven touchdowns. I know he's banged up. I know he had some pretty good PFF scores. But 85 is not a bad rating for a guy going into his second year. Let's not overrate him. We know he got a superstar ability, which, I I mean, he's just a little overrated. That kind of sucks because I really do like Josh Jacobs. I'm a fan, and it it pains me because it pains me even more because when we go to number 17, on our list, this is my only eagle on the list, and that is Miles Sanders, who got an 80. If Josh Jacobs got an 88, there is no way Miles Sanders only gets an 80. Miles Sanders, 2019, 1,327 yards per scrimmage, more than Josh Jacobs, and six rushing touchdowns. And you could also argue, you know, for all the PFF, the missed tackles and stuff that Josh Jacobs has, well, in reality, Miles Sanders was massive for Philadelphia being able to find a way to crack the playoffs last year. He was... Carrying the offense. It was him and Carson Wentz. He was literally our best receiver, most dangerous weapon in games that were must-win games for Philadelphia to find a way to, you know, scratch and claw their way in the playoffs. So if Josh Jacobs got an 88, I think Miles Sanders should have got an 83. And I, and I actually see a lot of people that weren't even Eagle fans saying Miles Sanders' rating is one of the worst ones. And you look at, like, all the other second-year players at, at the running back spot. You have Josh Jacobs as an 88. Miles Sanders is number two at an 80. And then at number three, you have David Montgomery of the Bears with a 78. There is, there is no way that the gap between Montgomery and, and, and Sanders is two points, but then the gap between Sanders and Josh Jacobs is eight points. There is no way, absolutely no way that that can happen. So, yeah, I'm a little bit heated about Miles Sanders as an Eagle fan, and I think it should be you know at least an 83 for me. Go to number 18 on the list, and this is one that's, you know, it's, it's topical. It's Drew Brees getting the 93, when you, especially when you see Tom Brady only getting a 90. I think 93 for Drew Brees, a little high. Played in 11 games last year, 2,900 yards, 27 touchdowns, four picks. I think you just give him a 90. I think you throw Drew Brees a 90, you're not going to see anyone complaining. 93, eh, you know, is he really three points better than Drew Brees, uh, Tom Brady at this point? Especially Drew Brees in the playoffs did not look great. Uh, I think I think 93 is a little too a little too high for Drew Brees starting off the Madden 21 season. But it's not... It's not outrageous. I'm not going to lose any sleep. I'm not going to tag anybody. A 93, it is what it is. He's Drew Brees. I think 90 might have been fair. More fair. Uh, going to number 19. This is one that a lot of uh, people tagged me on Twitter. And that's Gardner Minshew. Only getting a 70 overall. When you looked at him last year, thir- uh, 3,200 passing yards, 21 touchdowns to six picks, as well as 300 rushing yards. Behind, like, you know, it's pretty meh. Jags offense wasn't a bad offense. Was definitely not a prolific offense. I think you give Gardner Minshew a 75. Not a lot of people are complaining. I don't think anyone would say that's way too high if you give Gardner Minshew a 75. And I know a lot of people are excited and, and you know and anticipating that Jacksonville could be a very popular team for them to play in their franchise mode in Madden 21. And they'd be like, man, make my life a little bit easier. Give Gardner Minshew, who had a really good rookie season, all things considered, especially draft position and the talent around him in Jacksonville, give him something higher. I think 75. Probably would have been a lot more. Even 74. 74, 75, 76. 
is a lot more appropriate where Gardner Minshew should be entering year two than just a 70 overall. And the final player on this list is your defending rookie of the year, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray got a 77. And in 2019, he won the Offensive Rookie of the Year. 3,700 passing yards, 20 touchdowns to 12 picks, 550 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns. Now, I... I thought there were more deserving offensive rookie of the years. I thought you could look at A.J. Brown. I thought you could look at Josh Jacobs. You could look at Miles Sanders. I would have had those three guys ahead of Kyler Murray. However, you know, it's quarterbacks. Quarterbacks get the awards. And, and, Kyler, and you know, when you look at the play of Kyler Murray, there was ridiculous throws. I, I was skeptical of him making that jump from college to the pros like he did. And, and he proved me wrong. And I'm not going to say he proved me wrong because you could see the potential. But I was just, I was cautiously optimistic before saying this guy's going to be an absolute beast right out the gate. But a 77 is is pretty harsh, especially when you look at, say, Baker Mayfield. Remember, Baker Mayfield was like sub, you know, in the, sub 80 as a rookie, and then to kick off, uh, what was it, Madden uh, 20, Madden 19, might have been Madden 20. He definitely was Madden 20. He was like an 81. So, like, why give Kyler Murray four points less than what Baker Mayfield? I think Kyler Murray's rookie season was as impressive as Baker Mayfield's. So, I think 77. I would have give Kyler Murray an 80. I think a lot of people would agree with that. And this is another very popular name that I was seeing on social media. So there you go, guys. Those are the 20 worst ratings in Madden 21 at launch, according to myself and according to everyone that let their opinions be known on my old Twitters. What do you feel about my list? Anyone else that I missed that is, a, that's, you know, brutal. They got it absolutely wrong. Let me know in the comment section below. As always... It's C4 saying like, because that helps the video in the old YouTube algorithm. Subscribe. We're on our way to 150,000 for the Madden 21 season. Until next time, it, I'm going to say you later. I'm going to see you later, you silly gooses.